Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another CW 2020 video with Impact Wrestling. We have our second against all odds pay-per-view, which is the last stop on the road to Bound for Glory. I just want to say a quick thank you to Ben and Gunnawin for their comments on the decision to sign John Cena. And we've all agreed that that will not be happening. We're certainly going to go for a bit more of a challenge, which is fair enough, as I say, it does add a, a massive, a hell of amount of... Um, Unreal isn't with the save, but as I say, I've got offline saves I can mess about with unrealistic signings, etc. So, more than happy to carry on. And let's be honest, some of the, the signings and acquisitions we've made are probably already in the unrealistic side. So, yeah, there's no real pressure there. It's been an interesting couple of weeks trying to book up towards against the odds because there's some things you want to pull the trigger on, but you feel like it's, it's probably best that you hold them out to bound for glory. So a quick recap first off of last year's show, where we had a main event of Ace Austin defeating Matt Cardona to retain the World Championship. So a lot changes in the space of a year. We also have Jeff Hardy defeating EC3. I think that might have been the debut of Johnny Dango and Jordan Grace over Taya Valkyrie via disqualification. You see that as well, Luchasaurus went to a double counter with Moose. Due to the expiry of their contracts, Luchasaurus is no longer with us. Also leaving, and I don't even think these two debuted. They were signed to open deals, but I never debuted them. They were short-term contracts, and because I couldn't find a plan, just let them go. And that was Eli Drake and Juice Robinson. But what about the now and the present? And now we are going to quickly have a look at our show history. So four tapings as always, um, I still don't feel confident enough to upgrade the production, contrast to what I've done in the Shimmer save. So I started off these tapings, we're at the Joe Miller ballpark for them, just Joe saying, you know, he's fed up of Josh Alexander ducking him and he's going to get just a one-on-one -on -one wrestling match and he's going to just take that championship away. So he faces Heath in the opener, picks up the win. Priscilla Kelly, one over Killer Kelly, AJ Lee over B Priestley, obviously giving AJ that big first victory, that return matchup to give her some momentum. We had some words from Thunder Rosa after she defeated Daniel Dashwood. That was just her saying she still wants to come back for that Women's Championship or the Knockouts Championship. Machine Gun and Carol Anderson defeated Roderick Strong. We then had some words from, of course, the trio of Chris Bay, El Phantasmo and Jay White, because Bullet Club is here in Impact Wrestling. With Max Caster over Eddie Edwards before he cut some verbal beat down on Jeff Hardy after defeating him at the pay per view. We'd Leo Rush defeat Johnny Dango. And then in our main event, we announced he was signing at the event. He's here making his debut. And Buddy Matthews defeated Brian Myers. 55 overall because of the penalty by production. First taping, we had the confrontation between Joe and Alexander. Richard Holiday picked up the win over Luchasaurus, followed by Trey Miguel over Eva Luno. AJ Lee says to us that she's quite happy to be back wrestling again and she felt good. She's looking forward to getting her hands on Diona Perrazzo. Priscilla Kelly defeated Jessica Havoc. Matt Cardona says he's still picking up wins. He's always ready. Don't you guys be forgetting about me. We are rushed the man of the hour. Had some mods on Chris Sabin. He says he thinks he might challenge for that belt. He never lost it in the first place, so he'll be keen to get it back. A Jeff Hardy over John Silver, we had Claudio Castagnoli over El Fantasmo before he was beat down by Chris Bay, J.Y. and El Fantasmo. A few words from Kurt Angle just saying obviously about the, the situation and hopes to put on a blockbuster main event tonight. And Chad Betts defeated Minoru Suzuki and they didn't click, which resulted in just a 59. I thought that one would have been insane. We then moved on with Chris Bay, words on Castagnoli says, Come on big man, you want to fight me again? You can, I'll just beat you again and defend the newly won championship. I'd suicide, defeat Caleb Conley. We had a confrontation between Jeff and Max Castor, making use of that promise. Priscilla Kelly defeated Maki Ito. Some more words from AJ Lee on Diona Perrazzo. I'd Matt Riddle defeat Cousin Jake, before Cousin Jake was just raging and cut a massive promo on Riddle. With the teams of Wardlow, Will Hobbs and FTR defeat the Inflictors of Pain and the Good Brothers. Before Roderick Strong took his 
frustration of a previous defeat to Carl Anderson out on Doc Gallows. Richard Holiday defeated Rich Swan, Jay Lethal defeated Johnny Dango, Kurt Angle gives me the cheap promo rating of a 74. Probably cheap and probably should use other stuff there, but hey, boost the show rating up a wee bit. And Buddy Matthews defeated Madman Fulton in our main event before a stare down between Buddy Matthews and Ace Austin. Which led us to the final taping of a Kurt Angle promo. I wish everyone would enjoy the show and look forward to the big event coming up in, well, when it's still recording, it'll be that Saturday. Or Friday, even, sorry, with the pay per views. Chili Volo Evil Uno. Roderick Strong then defeated Carl Anderson, a bit of revenge there, and after the match, Bobby Fish joins Roderick Strong in making his debut here in Impact Wrestling, and they take out Carl Anderson. FTR says, I hope that they don't have any ideas of what they're going to do on Friday, since it's been revealed that Strong and Fish will replace the Good Brothers in that fatal four-way tag match. More on that when we run down the card. From the Rose over Kiera Hogan, Matt Riddle over Cousin Jake, AJ, Stel, uh, AJ Lee sorry, over Ty Valkyrie, before she sees Diona on guest commentary, tries to get her hands on her, but just can't. Buddy Matthews are one over Joe Doring. Murphy then says, or Matthews just says here, we know how good of us, you know, I'm the best cape secret, you're the ace and the sleeve. Let's see who truly is the best worker here in Impact. Lee Moriarty defeated Eric Young, and then with the alliance of our free heels in the main event of Chris Saban, Max Caster, and Samoa Joe before they lost after Leo Rush pinned Chris Sabin. Unfortunately, because the tapings are at the start of the month and the show is at the end, you can always have people leave, you can have people have injuries, and unfortunately we did lose two workers to injury, so Cousin Jake will not be participating tonight. We have a suitable replacement, and we have also lost Jay White, although he can work through stuff, but he wouldn't have been wrestling, but he would have had a, a big hand in the show. So as, before we jump in, I'll just quickly run down your card. So you're going to see FTR take on Will Hobbs and Wardlow, take on the Inflictors of Pain, and take on Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish for the Impact Tag Team Championships. Matt Riddle is going to face Minoru Suzuki instead of facing Cousin Jake. We've got Buddy Matthews versus Ace Austin. Jeff Hardy vs Max Caster, Claudio Castagnoli vs Chris Bay for the Television Championship, Knockouts Championship on the line for AJ Lee vs Diona Perrazzo, X Division Championship on the line for Leo Rush vs Chris Sabin, and Samoa Joe Josh Alexander Free for the World Impact Championship. So without further ado, let's do it. So we changed where we were, we're in a different area of the world in America. We're in a different state. But we're at the Budweiser Events Centre. And I started off Matt Riddle on the ring, great crowd ovation. It's just Kurt Angle confirming the Cousin Jake injury. And that it will be Matt Riddle versus Minoru Suzuki. And that starts us off with a 67 promo. That match up. Good wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd. And Matt Riddle picks up the win in 13.37 by pinfall, a 66, so still a performance there, and a steal the show opening matchup. Moving along, we had the fatal four way for the Impact Tag Team Championships, and it allowed Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong to defeat FTR, Will Hobbs, and Wardlow, and the Inflictors of Pain in 15.15 when Roderick Strong submitted Denza with a stronghold, giving new tag champs, Roddy and Bobby Fish. I felt like it was going okay with Hobbs and Wardlow, but I'd like to kind of push them in a more kind of singles way as a bit of a an interesting tag team. But I just feel like Fish and, Re uh, Fish and Strong, put them together, it's going to be undisputedly great. But good matchup overall, and that's considering that we had both Wheeler and Harwood wanting to be protected in this matchup. So we had to keep them strong, but no tag team champions. And they celebrate, 55. Good stuff. Good matchup, Buddy Matthews over Ace Austin was a win in 13.47 with a silver shock. A 68 here, both guys with 67 performances. Ace Austin's got a little stale. Just made it regular. You need to give Buddy a good big victory on pay-per-view. And I think Kevin Ace were always going to produce a bit of magic. Moving along, to, uh, Max Caster, another one over Jeff in 13.02. 54, both guys getting the same level of performances. I can't take any more overness away from Jeff to put Caster over their level and uh, yeah just made use of the promise and in that plan was to get 
podcast are over. Can't wait till he joins AW on an exclusive deal and all that hard work is down the pan. We had a decent matchup for the television championship. First defence for Chris Bay and he wins in 12.34 with a triple C. So Claudio takes a loss here. A 64 again building up uh, Chris Bay. Uh, and uh, yeah, Claudio having a lot of issues with Bullet Club. After this, Jay White cuts a promo and he says, Wookie, well, hey, Claudio, you had nothing but a laughing stock. You always say you're going to try and get to the top. You should be a world champion. You're not even anywhere close to my level. So if you want to try and get your hands on me, Claudio, you better earn it over the next couple of weeks. 61. I did you Lee defeat Diona in 11.52 by disqualification, 57 here, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have AJ Lee lose, but at the same time, Diona's keeping the belt to, the, uh, to Bound for Glory, and uh, I, I just feel like we can build AJ up, we can get her back into a rhythm, and there's going to be more things happening in this knockouts division for a big pay-per-view match, because we had Ronda Rousey come back and she beats the 11 daylight out of Diona Perrazzo. Is that someone that wants their knockouts championship back? Possibly. But she is absolutely furious. Couple of judo chops and judo throws, etc. about. And a 67 for Ronda. Man of the hour, Leo Rush hits his wee promo ahead of his match with Chris Sabin. It's just recapping what he's been saying previously. It's the man of the hour's time. It's a championship he never lost. And he's looking like hoping to become a two time X Division champion. Which he does. A decent matchup. Leo Rush defeats Chris Sabin in 1049 with a Dragon Skull, meaning Leo Rush is your new Impact X Division champion. 58. I just feel Leo's going to do good bits in the X Division. Chris can be versatile in many fields, not just in the singles ranks. So I just felt it was time to move the belt off of Leo, eh, off of Chris to Leo. And the main event. Decent matchup. <laughs> the Josh title reign's not really went as well as we hoped. But he defeats Samoa Joe in 13.47 with a Pearl River plunge, giving Josh his third defence of the Impact World Championship. So a 59 overall, both guys with a 59 performance. Just a regular matchup because Joe doesn't quite have the stamina anymore. And we end the show with a stare down between Josh Alexander and a potential future challenger in the forum of Buddy. Matthews. So the show itself was only a 55. It lost its popularity in 10 regions and it increased their popularity in 37. So not so good in the US. Truthfully, I just don't think the Alexander Joe promo has been strong enough. The program has been strong enough to carry as an elite level, which is kind of the reason why Buddy Matthews is getting the straight push because he does have the overness. As you can see, how many is a good matchup. But um, there is big plans. It's not just going to be Alexander and Buddy at the at Bound for Glory. I'm hoping to try and make that multi man. But at the moment, uh, three matches pretty much set in stone. So I'm the multi person. The plan was if we did sign Cena, which obviously we won't be, but if we did sign Cena, it was going to be uh, Cena versus Joe. So overall, I will hit the finish button here and I will see you back in the main screen. So there's some sombre news to come back to. The great Kajika has passed away in game. We will see Mickey James reset me WWE, how that went, completely different IRL. Where are we? Where is Impact? Are we that far down? There we go. Hardly spectacular. 7,200 fans, but a few people there just, oh dear, we've dropped, we've dropped. That's not good. Priscilla Kelly's decided to start dating with Senza Volto, so that is an Impact Wrestling relationship. But yeah, the death of Impact, so we've dropped back down. Yeah, I maybe shouldn't have took the risk with um, Josh and, and Joe. So, we're going to be down for a little bit, that's fine. It's up to us to obviously recover and, and make sure we're ready to go medium again, but I should have been a lot more stronger in the first place. So a lot of items here you'll see, we'll cut the through them. So obviously that impact dating, John, T uh, John Silver, exclusive written deal with AEW, so he's left everywhere. So we'll be unable to, to gain any popularity. So 
we can look at it the the run to bound for glory is going to be a free hit and then it's basically how we come out of bound for glory it will define whether we're going to be small or medium but we do have that achievement for medium which is good we can utilize this time period to maybe just uh, accumulate more funds and put ourselves in a better position I could, what i could do and i'm going to I'm going to again give you guys an opinion on this one because I, I probably won't book the shows until the, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday before the video comes out on the Monday so it gives a lot of time to take feedback back. Do you feel it might be worth my while setting the, the highest level the company can be as small so we can go to medium and ensuring that we have everything in order financially and, and where we want to go with pushes etc before we hit medium again so I'll let you I'll let you have a look at that let me know what you think um, I know some of these will say it's up to you but honestly let me know what you, what you would do in that situation uh, well as I say we'll consider it for there uh, how we're going to go going forward but I just think it could even be a, it could even be a product thing where we're quite limited to what we can do maybe I should move it to something else but yeah, um, just intrigued what people's thoughts are. It's always good to gather opinion, and we'll, we'll gather on from there. Uh, one small tidbit as well that I'm probably going to add in a few videos going forward as well. So there'll be a small hiatus to all the series just over the Christmas period. I think it'll be roughly about a week to ten days. So instead of like the couple of videos a week, it'll strictly be two Christmas specials effectively. We are both Saturdays, which are on a clear Christmas Day and New Year's Day, but obviously don't watch them when their days go and enjoy time and be with your family, but they'll always be there, that's that's the reason why they're digging up, they'll be there as a, a kind of, if you want to watch this on Boxing Day if you're bored or whatever. Uh, just going to review them offline, so just to let you see, you know, I don't just read the videos online uh, for YouTube, I actually have a, a very fun save offline. Uh, you can see how crazy the booking is and all that as well, but as I say, that'll be, at the time of recording, uh, and probably when this goes live as well, I'm about a month away so just warning and I'll put a wee, a wee note up as well on the YouTube channel uh, and remember um, next week as well, it may already have started, I don't know when it expires if you enter Fax21 in the Grey Dog software shop you can get 20% off TW2020 so if you're in the UK 28 quid down to 2280 uh, I don't know what it is in US dollars, that's just what it equates to when I put it in so, uh, worth keeping a look at that. Also, 41,000 view of the show, and a buy rate of 0 0.03. So, we'll finish it with our finances. Uh, yeah, that's obviously a little bit down. Ticket sales are down as well. It's because we ran a much smaller venue just because we kept running in the same state. So, it was just getting less and less. So, I think we're only getting 9,000 if we kept running in our area, which is, of course, the South East, uh -huh, so we went elsewhere. That's all. So, thanks for watching. As I say, hopefully, you'll join us next Monday for Bound for Glory. And of course, remember you have AW on a Wednesday and a Saturday, and some shimmer on a Thursday. So, cheers for watching. Take it easy, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.